Julian, SmartC was just started in 2024, but it has had such an impact that almost the whole maritime industry knows about it. I attended the leadership uh, meeting on Monday, and I, I heard uh, your company name mentioned more than twice. Wow! Okay. Publicly, so. But I would say for the few in our audience who might not have heard about it, uh, please describe briefly what SmartC is and what it offers to the maritime sector. Yeah, no, thank you for that. And um, yeah, SmartC is, is quite a compelling um, company, um, mainly because our shareholder is a company called CETA. Um, CETA is 75 years in the aviation sector, and they're probably the most important technology company in that sector. Um, over the last 75 years, they've unified the value chain um, of the industry by implementing technologies which allow the different stakeholders to talk to each other, um, from the airport to the check-in to the immigration on board the plane. Um, and they manage around four billion pieces of baggage every year. They invented the RFI code, which, which we use. So the fact that CETA has um, started a company called SmartSea, and now SmartSea is coming to the maritime industry with all of this uh, IP and knowledge and know-how of how to unify the different parts of the supply chain. I think that's why it's such a compelling company for maritime. Smarty represents a unique case of uh, technology transfer from aviation to maritime. What specific aviation solutions have proven most valuable in addressing maritime challenges and where have you encountered the greatest implementation hurdles? Um, I think for me there's a lot of standards within aviation that seem to be further ahead than, than maritime. Um, the biggest, the biggest, I would say, opportunity for maritime is the standardization of uh, technology. So in aviation, you have a lot of digital standards, um, which means that a lot of technology doesn't work in isolation of each other. Whereas in maritime, you have a lot of silos. You have a lot of good technology um, but because of the lack of digital uh, standards in maritime, none of that technology really talks to each other. So it's very difficult for a ship to talk to a port, for example. Whereas in aviation, you have um, that digital uh, communication between a plane and an airport. So this is where I think there's a lot of opportunity. Some more, I would say, easy to understand technology. So the way that a, an aeroplane, for example, will fly from point A to point B, um, using uh, flight path analysis is more uh, advanced than, say, for example, a vessel um, going from point A to point B. Clearly, the impact of stronger cybersecurity in aviation. Um, we don't want aeroplanes being hijacked and falling out the sky. There's an implication on life. Whereas with vessels, quite often they're moving containers, so it's less so. But And that's that's why, obviously, The impact of cyber and the quality of cybersecurity in aviation is higher than in maritime. Um, so yeah, there's some very interesting, obvious um, technologies, but for me, the biggest opportunity is this unification of digital standards, uh, digital platforms, which allow the technologies to talk to each other. You have emphasized that maritime likes a digital glue that CETA provided for aviation. So what, what concrete steps is SmartSea taking to establish common digital standards and how are you convincing traditionally competitive stakeholders to share their data? It's a very, very tricky one because data is really the, um, I would say, power that companies have. Um, and also, I think in the maritime industry, it's a very competitive uh, landscape. So this fear of sharing data between the different shipping companies and the ports is, is, is there. In Maritime, they've got very good at encrypting the data, um, which still protects uh, the, uh, the user. Um, but I think, I think this, is, this is where we have an opportunity, is to learn from the CETA uh, process. CETA actually was able to get ownership from the aviation sector. So 400 airlines actually own CETA. Um, now, if you're all in this special club where you can agree between you, the different stakeholders that there needs to be some commonality in technology 
And let's all agree that as an industry, we need to have this common denominator. With everything else, we can compete. Now in maritime, what SmartSea would like to do is, is unify a lot of the, the maritime stakeholders. So we're not opposed to the idea of, of allowing maritime stakeholders do the same thing in SmartSea as aviation did in CETA. Basically, what I'm saying is SmartSea is open to shareholding from uh, industry players. The other driver for us is really getting organizations like the IMO behind what we're trying to do. Because I think if they can drive this change and these digital standards and the sharing of data and the commonality, then we can start to make some progress. What I'm struggling with is, is going to individual shipping companies or ports, trying to convince them that the future is, is this standardization. Um, because one won't go without the other one and one won't go with it if you know what I mean. So it, it, it's a big, big effort. It won't happen overnight. I think it will happen over the next few decades, but we have to start somewhere and we have to try. And what better opportunity do we have than learning from the company that did this in the aviation sector? Your partnership with Digital Energy AI focuses on operational efficiency and emission reduction. How do you see AI-driven solutions helping maritime companies meet increasingly strict environmental regulations while maintaining profitability? Yeah, I mean, I think we've, all, in my opinion, I mean, I've been around a lot of the discussion on sustainability, alternative fuels, and what we're all doing in that regard in maritime. And it's been a, 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 it's been a, a conversation that I think we've all got used to having now. What we're now seeing is this underpinning of how technology can enable this sustainability change. And what we're seeing now is the technology agenda and the sustainability agenda coming together. And I think that's really important because if you look at AI as an example, um, AI can do so much to, for example, improve uh, how a vessel will go from point A to point B, um, which will save on fuel, for example. Um, AI will also improve uh, safety um, of, of people. Um, AI can predict uh, collisions and, and, and issues. AI could improve just in time arrival of vessels. So I think there's a lot of underlying opportunity for AI to coexist with the sustainability agenda and, and, and augment it. Um, and we're really seeing that now at the moment, which is really exciting. The Maritimes industry traditional mindset has been cited as a barrier to digitalization. What specific strategies have proven most effective in driving adoption of your solutions among traditional maritime operators? I think what I've realized is, and, I, and this is when I first took over as the, being the CEO of SmartSea, I tried to present this um, really ambitious vision of digital standards, maritime data platforms and learning from aviation and you know you need to do everything all at once i think what i've realized is with with maritime industry we're slow adopters in general so the idea of of trying to change everything overnight is not reality in the maritime industry i think what's important is that we show value from some isolated technologies um, which ship owners and shipyards and ports can see value from, a return on investment. And then slowly, once those technologies are adopted, we can bring more technologies. So I think this is a step-by-step -step approach. And we're seeing, it, we're seeing it now. I mean, if you look around North Shipping, there's a lot more uh, being talked about in terms of technology. There's a lot more stands and exhibitors that are bringing technology solutions. But I think this is a gradual change. Um, and then all of a sudden, in a few decades, the, the technology agenda is, is across the whole spectrum. With recent uh, projects in Saudi Arabia, like Arroya cruise ship and alignment with Qatar Vision 2030, how are emerging markets different from established shipping hubs in terms of technology adoption? That's a really good question, and, and, and it's something that I've been thinking about a lot. Um, so if you look at the maritime industry, it's a very traditional industry, and in a lot of developed maritime developed economies maritime industries go back thousands of years to try and bring in technology to those cultures 
is very, very difficult to do. If you look at aviation, they were quite lucky because the growth of aviation correlated very nicely with the growth of technology. So it was an obvious marriage between the two, technology and aviation. I always say it's very different, different and difficult to go and change a culture, especially a culture that's been doing quite well for thousands of years. If you look at the developing maritime countries, particularly in the GCC, the Middle East, um, they are quite new and they're able to bring in the technologies a lot easier because they're working in a lot of respects from, let's say, blanker sheet of papers, whiter sheets of papers. So it's easier to them for them to see technology as an enabler and something that they can embrace from the beginning. So this is why we're seeing the GCC being a lot easier to break in terms of the technology development and uptick. As maritime systems become more connected, how is Smart Sea incorporating security by design and its solutions, particularly given the lessons learned from recent maritime cyber incidents? I think cyber is, is a very, very interesting subject now in maritime because as we get more connected, as technology grows, so too does the possibility of cyber attacks. And we're seeing this now with how connectivity is improving on vessels. Um, and therefore, I think we need to really step up in terms of the cybersecurity measures that we, we put in place. I think those that understand where we are with cyber um, will appreciate that for many years, cyber has been a little bit vague in terms of how the IMO defines cybersecurity standards. And I think that's now changing and needs to change as ships become more connected. Uh, we have uh, the things like Starlink, which are giving, giving vessels a lot more connectivity. Um, so I think the, the standards need to, to, to grow, grow up and become more mature. Uh, and I think that's again where we can learn from the aviation industry. Like I say, the impact of, of, of a cyber attack in an airport or on an aeroplane the risk is far greater. So they've had to improve standards. And CETA has obviously been working very closely with a lot of the cyber uh, security uh, companies, and we're bringing that cyber security into the maritime through CETA and the aviation industry. Thanks so much, Julian, for taking the time speaking with us today, and especially for sharing these valuable insights about SmartSea's innovative approach to maritime digitalization. I think your perspective on bridging aviation technology expertise with maritime needs offers our audience a unique window into the future of the industry. Thanks so much, Jay. No, thank you so much and uh, have a good rest of the week and see you soon. Thank you thank very you. much.